Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're gonna do this. We're making dynamic, twisting rope in Cinema 4D. This video was brought to you by Skillshare, where you can get access to over 25,000 full courses on a huge range of subjects. The classes are project-based and teachers take you through all the steps in creating each project. And when you're done, you can share your work with teachers and the student community for feedback and support. We've actually got two CG Shortcuts courses on there now, with our latest course being released just last month, covering a bunch of stuff beyond what we normally go into on YouTube. So if you wanna test out Skillshare, there's a link below for a free two month trial that will give you access to the entire catalog of courses, including the courses from CG Shortcuts so you can see if it's right for you. Now let's get back to the tutorial. So the quickest, easiest way to do this in Cinema 4D is with a plugin called HoRope. I'll put a link in the description down below. Go ahead and download that and install it. And when you do, you can go and find that up here in the plugins menu. So we don't wanna click on that just yet. For this plugin to work, we need something to apply it to. So first we'll need to draw a spline. So we'll come up to our pen tool then it might make life easier if we change the views. Let's just hit the middle mouse button and go to the front view. I want our pen to snap to the grid here. So we'll come over to the snapping settings. We wanna turn on enable snap and we'll come back in again and turn on work plane snap. And one more, we want grid point snap. And now if we hover our mouse over one of these grid points, you can see that's snapping nicely. So let's put a point here and drag one out here. This is basically going to be the length of our rope. We'll switch back to our perspective view. And there we go, we've got a nice flat rope spline. So now with that selected, we can come back to plugins and apply our hoe rope. Don't forget to hold alt on the keyboard to automatically apply that to our spline. And you should get something like this. And now we need to set up our rope. You can see down here, we've got a few options. We'll start up here with bones. This is basically how many bone segments there'll be in our rope. The more bones, the more detailed the rope can be. And as I hover over here, you can see those different bone sections being highlighted. If you've ever done rigging, you'll know that bones are kind of the underlying drivers of the mesh. We'll leave that set to 16. And the next option we have here is the radius, which as the name suggests, just changes the radius of our rope. Let's leave that at nine for now. Then we've got our segment caps, which just changes the subdivision in the tips of our rope here. And the same kind of deal with our segments rotation here. That just adds more geometry to the outside of our rope. So if we bring that up, it'll smooth it out a bit, but let's just keep this nice and low for now. We can always use a subdivision surface after we've done the dynamics to smooth this out. We wanna keep everything nice and lightweight while we do our simulations. Next, we've got create controls. Now the controls are these little objects at the tip and tail of our rope. We'll talk more about that shortly. We also have an option down here to create a sweep. And if we just get this into position so you can see this, we'll turn that on and it creates a sweep along all of our bones. So we've got a nice smooth solid shape for our rope. And we definitely want that on, so we'll leave that. We also wanna see our sweep and our bones, so we'll leave that option selected as well. Now we're all set with that. We'll come back to our hoe rope and right click, and we'll come down here and make it editable. And that'll bake in all the settings and give us a dynamic rope. So if we hit play, our rope is gonna act like rope. And the really cool thing about this setup is you have loads of control over this rope. If we grab one of these controllers, we can easily move it around and interactively get our rope exactly the way we want it. So you could have a whole bunch of fun with this setup as it is, but we wanna make loads of these ropes and twist them all together. So if we stop the playback and rewind, it should reset our rope back to how it was. So the first thing we wanna do is work on duplicating this rope. As usual, the best way to clone things is with a cloner object. So with our hoe rope selected, we'll come up to the MoGraph menu and we'll grab a cloner. Just as before, don't forget to hold Alt so it's automatically applied. And now we've got three ropes, only they're going the wrong way. Ideally, we want a bunch of ropes that are clustered together in a kind of radial fashion. Lucky for us, we have that exact option down here in the cloner. Let's change the mode to radial. And it's definitely in a radial shape, but it's not quite what we're after. All we need to do is change the plane to ZY, and that's cloning it the way we want. But we wanna bring these ropes in a bit closer to each other. So to do that, all we need to do is bring the radius right down. If it gets to zero and they're still not quite close enough, we can always make this a negative number until it's looking the way we want. 
Okay, I think they're close enough there. Let's have a better look. Right, the next thing we want to do is add a few more of these rope strands in here. At the moment, the count is set to five. Let's try bringing it up to 12. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good, but the individual strands are looking a bit too thick for my liking. So how do we adjust this now that we don't have our ho rope settings to play with? Let's go and see what we've got to work with up here. If we pop these open, firstly, you'll notice we have a dynamics tag over here. We'll come back to that shortly. Then over here, you can see the sweep that we created earlier. And if we open that, we've got a circle sweeping along a tracer here. So in theory, if we change the radius of the circle, that should affect the radius of our ropes. Let's try four centimeters. And that did the trick. Okay, let's hit play and see what happens. Hmm, not much. What's going on? We've got a dynamics tag up here. So where's the dynamics? The problem is if we want this setup to work, we need a dynamics tag on each one of these individual strands. And the best way I found to do that is to grab our cloner and convert each one of these clones into their own object. So we'll right click and we wanna make it editable as well. So now if we unfold this, we've got rope zero, rope one, rope two, one of these for each one of our ropes. Each one now has a dynamics tag. So if we hit play, they've all become dynamic and they're even interacting with each other, which is great. So now we need to figure out a way to twist these guys up. So we'll pause our simulation and rewind it. So again, in theory, if we were to parent all of these controls to a null, we should be able to rotate the null and therefore rotate all the controls, which hopefully will give us the twist in the rope. Don't worry if that doesn't make any sense. I'm sure it'll be a bit more clear as we go through the steps. So we'll start by bringing in that null and we actually want a null at either end of our rope. So we'll hold down control and drag out a second null to the other end. And if we switch views, we can check the position in the front view. And I think that's right in the center, that should work for us. So let's come up here and get a better look at how these ropes are working. So here's one individual rope. Below that we have a null. And inside that we've got our sweep. And we've got a controls null. Then we've got our bones down here and that's represented by all of these capsules. Then in our connectors, we have all our connectors, which are connecting all the bones. It's a bit of a complex setup, which is why this plugin is so much better than doing it manually. All we really need to worry about is the control section here where we've got a root and a target. Let's click on that root and you'll see if we zoom out, the controls down this end are called the root and the controls over here are the target. Now the null we put over here is in the middle of the targets, as you can see. So let's rename that target. It's going to be controlling all the targets. Now we'll grab the null at the other end and rename that root. It's going to be controlling all of the roots. So now we wanna put all of the root controls in our root null and all of our target controls in our target null. Now you could just manually go to each control and grab it and drag it up here, but that's gonna take quite a while with 12 different sets of controls. So I'll show you a little trick to do this way quicker. If we come up and click on the little search icon up here, then we type in root, we'll get a list of all the root controllers as well as our root null. Now all we need to do is grab each one of these and drag them straight into the null, which is visible of course, because it has the same name. And now we just need to do the same thing for the target. So we'll grab all those guys and drag them into the target null. Okay, now we'll cancel our search by clicking this little button. Then we can collapse these guys. Then we'll switch back to our perspective view and hit play again. Now, if we grab our target null, we can move all of these controls together as one. So let's pause that and we'll rewind. Hopefully you can see where we're going with this. I'm hoping that by rotating our target null, we should be able to twist this rope. Let's give it a try, shall we? Let's grab our target and under the coordinates, I think it's the pitch that we want to animate. Yep, that's the one. Let's put a keyframe at zero. Then we'll scooch forward to frame 100. And we want this to do three full revolutions. So if we type in 360 degrees, asterisk or times three, enter, we get 1,080 degrees or three revolutions. 
So if we play that back, there it goes. Let's pause that for a second. The grid is kind of distracting, so let's turn that off. If we come up to filter, we can switch it off here. Now, if we play that back, while it's doing its three revolutions, we're getting some unnatural looking bunching happening with our rope. It looks like they're trying not to touch each other and we're getting the strange spacing between everything. So we'll stop that and go and check out our dynamics tag. If we scooch over to the collision tab, this could be the problem. We'll probably want to adjust the collision size, but we want to do this for all of our dynamics tags. So again, an easy way to select all of those guys. We know they've been applied to the ho rope null. So let's type in ho rope into our search bar. And now we've got easy access to them. We'll select all of them and we'll change the size increment to negative two. And now if we play that back, we'll let it sim for a bit. And now they're getting a bit closer and things are looking a bit more natural. And we might come back and tweak this again later, but we'll pause this for now. I wanna figure out a way to make this twisting look a little bit more interesting. Let's go up here and close our search off. And we might just tidy this up a bit. We'll go view, folding, and fold all. So now we've just got our main controls here. If we rewind, you'll see that all of the controls are bunched up at either end here. So I think one way to make this a bit more interesting is to spread them out a bit. So if we grab our root and the scale tool, we can scale these all out together. Now, if we play that back, that's making things look a little less uniform. And we can probably stop that there and apply the same effect to the other end. We'll grab our target and scale those apart a bit and play that back. I think that's working nicely. Although the more it twists, the less we see any of those changes. So we'll pause that. Maybe we just have it twist two revolutions. Let's go back to frame 100 where we set our keyframe earlier. Now let's change the value here to 720 degrees and we'll keyframe that. And we might just grab this keyframe here and drag it over to frame 200. So things are happening a little slower. And if we play that back, that's looking much nicer. Although the more it twists, the less they like to touch each other. So we might have to go back and adjust our dynamic collisions again. So back up here, we'll do a search for ho rope, grab all of those tags, and let's try negative four this time. And if we play that back, that's better. It's kind of looking a bit like pasta, but this is definitely the effect we want. And if we stop that and zoom in a bit, you can see they're touching each other now, but we could probably make this look a little bit more interesting. What if we randomize the position of some of these strands? Let's reset our SIM and close our search. And we'll grab our move tool and we'll switch it into well coordinates. Then let's grab a couple of random target controllers and we'll just move them into some random positions. Put that guy down here. And same deal for the root controllers. One up here, one down here, and let's see what happens now. Now that's looking a bit more interesting. We've got strands popping out all over the place and we could actually mess this up even further to get an interesting look. If we stop that and move one of these guys way out, and then grab it and actually take it out of the null so it just stays in place up there. We'll do the same for one of the target controllers. Now, if we hit play, this guy's staying up here and this guy's spinning right around here. This is definitely giving us a bit more of a random look. So I have to say, I'm pretty happy with the way our rope is looking now. Let's pause it and give it a render and see what we're getting. Hmm, that doesn't look right. It looks like our bones are actually being rendered. And because they're a bit thicker, we can't see the underlying sweep. So let's go and see why these are being rendered. If we collapse these and open our cloner, if we dig a little deeper, we'll find those bones. Here's what's being rendered, all of the capsules. So all we need to do is hide them from the renderer. If we hold Alt 
and click here a few times until our stop lights go red, they won't be visible in the viewport or in the render. And you can see that's only affected one of our ropes. We need to apply this to the other ropes as well. So back in our search, if we type in bone, we'll get all of these bones. But if we put an S on the end, we'll just get the nulls. So we'll grab all of those and switch them off. A sneaky way to do this is to hit Alt twice until they both go red and then click and drag up to apply it to all of them. And now if we hit render, let's fix the problem. But our ropes are looking a little bit jaggy. One way to smooth these out is by coming over here and changing some of the settings in the tracer object. The settings we want are down here under the object tab. But before we go changing anything, we wanna make sure we apply it to all of the tracers in the scene. So back to our search, we'll type in tracer, grab all of those guys, and all we need to do is change the intermediate points to subdivided. And it's looking a bit smoother in the viewport. If we give it a render, that's looking great. And you probably won't even need a subdivision surface on that. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. As usual, you can download the project file below to save a bit of time. Don't forget to check out our brand new website for more CG related stuff. You can find that at cgshortcuts.com and I will catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section below. Or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. Catch you next time.